Welcome to another installment of Advanced Training for the Saints. Today we're going to take a look at uh, child sacrifices in the Bible, who is responsible, what God thinks about child sacrifices, and what that has to do with what we're seeing in the news today. Uh, basically, a simple study, we're just going to use a chain reference and take a look at a couple of key scriptures in the Bible on the subject. But first, <clears throat> what we need to do is take a look at what the other side is saying about what's happening in Gaza. Because El Qazir is claiming they're being censored and we're not hearing... Uh, half the story that's coming out of the Middle East. But, hey, let's take a look at their video and try to make a determination on what you're telling us is true. Sadness that Gaza ever had. On Thursday, Adzaiza reported that 15 members of his own family were killed in an airstrike. We've seen the Gazans who remain online posting their last words, their final goodbyes. Before we came into the studio, we checked how many reporters have been killed by Israel. It's around seven, but that number is increasing every day. The situation is overwhelming for Gaza's journalists and for people more generally. And the prospect of Gaza going dark of Gazans being cut off from one another, cut off from the outside world, just as Israeli forces invade, is really terrifying. The people of Gaza cannot withstand a siege for much longer. There will be no ability for Palestinians in Gaza to get out any news and information about their destruction, uh, about what is happening to their lives. The problem is the sheer size of uh, the calamity that has befallen Gaza. And it is very clear that the little information that we're getting from doctors and humanitarian workers and ordinary civilians in Gaza will soon be wiped out when Gaza goes dark. And that is imminent. It's very clear that Israel wants to make sure that the world can see what's happening on the ground so that they can continue to carry out uh, the atrocities that we are seeing unfolded uh, in real time, uh, in real life before our eyes. I fear that we are going to see a level of violence, destruction and death of civilians in Gaza that we have never seen before. The question now being asked across media outlets, where does it go from here? The so as we can see already, they're trying to set up the narrative that, oh, uh, they're not able to show us the information that's coming out of Gaza. It's being censored. So that opens the door for them to make up just about anything they want to make up on what's happening in Gaza. And of course, they're going to get a whole bunch of people who believe their side of the story with absolutely no evidence. Anyway, we're going to take a look at some of the news stories and, and take a look at how they you know, play both sides of the, uh, of the game. So, to be perfectly fair, uh, I ran across this today, uh, just happened to click on this link that showed up in the search, and it says, Forbid forbidden visitors from your country are not permitted to browse this site. Uh, this is Syria Times. So, I got no idea if Syria is blocking it or the U.S. is blocking it. But if you watch that whole El Qazir video, they nicely explain that they need to totally eliminate Israel because Israel is censoring and spreading all these lies and controlling uh, governments and controlling the United States and all this other stuff. And, you know, so we got to just typically, you know, what they want to do is wipe them off the face of the earth. Uh, anyway... Uh, they're entitled to their opinion. But one thing you know for sure, if El Jazeera sees one Israelite soldier commit a single crime, 
It'll be all over the news in a nanosecond. But have we seen anything yet? No, not yet. But anyway, one of the things that have come into question is how did Gaza or Hamas in Gaza? Uh, one thing I want to kind of point out is that uh, not every person in Gaza is a member of Hamas. You know, that's only a small, small, small percentage of, it's a radical faction. It, just like every, it, there's so many radical factions around, but uh, what the left wants to do is convince us that everybody is in a radical group, you know, whether they want to or not, and that's not true at all. But how did Hamas get a hold of all of these weapons that were made in the U.S., and how did he get into Gaza? Anyway, that's a mystery. But we got to ask the question anyway. And here we go, thanks to El Zazir, we got another picture of, what does this look like? It looks like, uh, well, it's not an M16, but it's a variation of the M16. You can see the sight, you can see the uh, flash suppressor. And this one, this is an older model, it's got the handle, it's got the iron sights. This is a newer upgraded model. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Maybe somebody will leave a comment and identify it. But you notice this thing has a uh, kind of a superior sighting system in a red dot. But it does have the iron sight sitting up here. So if someone wants to leave a comment and identify this weapon, please do. And we've got another picture uh, thanks to CNN. Are the U.S. and El Zazir again? What are they carrying? Ah, here's the carrying handle. Here's the iron sight on the front. These are definitely U.S. weapons. This one has the. Uh, I can't really tell if it's an adjustable stock or the old non-adjustable stock. But here we go. Proof positive that there are U.S. weapons in Gaza. And the question is. How did they get in there? Who moved those weapons in there? Well, we got this radical faction that's been sticking up for actually supporting, uh, you know, the, the murder of women and children in Gaza, justifying it. And they call themselves members of the Democratic Socialist Party, and they are in Congress. Now, you got to realize, a little bit of background on these people, they did write the book on the New Green Deal and a whole bunch of bills for gender equality. These are all attacks on God. They hate God. They deny God exists. But they claim to be experts on the Muslim religion and history of the Middle East, and they're coming out with... <laughs> their side of the stories, they're, they're basically, they're responsible for trying to divide America. There's the American dream where everybody comes here, and it doesn't matter what country you come from. People can come from Poland, they can get along with people from Germany, they can get along with people from Russia. They put all that stuff behind them, they can come from all these different countries in the Middle East, and we know all these countries in the Middle East have a history of generations or, or thousands of years of warring against one another and they come to the United States to get away from that crap and they live peacefully with their neighbors from those other countries. These people are dedicated to dividing those groups again and having them war against one another here in the United States. But most people are smart enough to see through that stuff. Well, uh, last week, those people were experts on firearms, trying to, uh, you know, end the Second Amendment, confiscate, take away all our firearms, and a reproductive system, coming out with, you know, all of their gender bills and all this other stuff. As a matter of fact, a couple of them here fly the Palestinian flag right next to the LGBTQ flag 
real smart. They were supposed to be experts on this stuff. Well, yeah. Oh, and they were experts on fire alarms, too. Remember uh, when this guy pulled the fire alarm and everybody jumped in and stuck up for him? Okay, this week they're experts on religion and real estate, knowing exactly who should own what in the Middle East. The problem is, uh, realistically, these Democrat socialists are actually smarter than half the kids in college now. Which is a lot like saying a rock is smarter than a bucket of sand. I mean, it's <laughs> these people are really not that bright. I would say 90% of the American public can see right through them. How they got elected is beyond me, but then we do have that problem. And if you look at the districts they represent, those districts were on the forefront of questions on the fixed election. Well, so, can you explain to me why college students who can't even figure out which bathroom to use are now all of a sudden experts on who should live in Jerusalem and who shouldn't? Obviously, it looks like someone's paying those college students who's behind all of this stuff we gotta find the answer okay and we all know we got that threat of terrorists coming over the border nobody knows who's coming over the border who they are or whatnot but when we see these demonstrations in the streets we gotta say the terrorists are already here you know they're marching down where did they get all of these I mean, you, you look at the news, there's hundreds, there's thousands of these Palestinian flags all over New York, uh, different blue cities, even even in, in Florida. Thousands of Palestinian flags. Where'd they all come from? Someone's got to be financing this stuff. And, you know, these aren't the cheapy nylon flags that you see on Amazon. I mean, these are rural flags. Who supplied all of these? We got to ask these questions. Actually, we're going to get down to it. Okay, thanks, Joe. Thanks. You know, you said. You know, I got kind of a question. If 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 Biden was really concerned about Gaza or Israel, how come he doesn't send Harris there? You know, our our borders are. Well, thanks to the open border. We have more Palestinians in the U.S. than in Palestine. Okay, and then talk about those demonstrations. How is it that we see pictures? I, I never thought I'd see today when I'd see thousands of feminists all over the world take to the streets to protest for the right to be bought, sold, and treated like livestock. The right to be denied an education. You know, I, I mean, come on. You know, these these women, what they come to the United States for to escape all of that stuff, and now they're out in the streets supporting it. And you notice they're all wearing masks. Are 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 these real Palestinian women, or are they just actors, paid actors? We don't know. So you got to explain to me why Muslims who left the Middle East and are living in the U.S. are protesting for their right to throw the Jews out and live in Jerusalem. It, to me, I haven't talked to any of them, but it just makes sense that, you know, if these people left that area, why are they protesting for the right to live over there? Are they going to... Are, 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 if we took the Jews out of Jerusalem... And, and, and they renamed it Palestine. Would they all move there? I don't know. These are questions we got to ask. It just doesn't make any sense. So, that's why we have thousands of feminists all over the world who are taking to the streets to show their support for ch child sacrifices. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. You know, I mean... These women came to the United States. Why? So they had the freedom 
and the protection and the safety and security to raise their children the way they wanted to raise them. But are these same women saying it's okay to sacrifice other children? I don't know. It's it's happened in the Bible. Okay, we're going to take a look at a couple of news stories. And uh, consider the source. You know, Yahoo News out of Canada. Uh, Israeli Hamas war. How the unverified claim about the beheaded babies spread. Same misinformation, different war. Okay, they all claim this is made up to sensational, unconfirmed allegations that Hamas beheaded several babies in the southern part of Israel continue to baffle with each development from the region only contributing to the chaos. In other words, you know, Droid Josie, whoever that is, <laughs> this is on Friday, October 13th, is still claiming that uh, it's fake news about the beheaded babies. And CNN here in the U.S., uh, Israeli official says government cannot confirm babies were beheaded in Hamas attack. And CNN is famous for this. Well, okay, who's your source? Well, it's an undisclosed source. It's just like, you know, El Zazir claiming... Oh, well, we're going to be censored. You're not going to hear the information coming out of Gaza. So, uh, yeah, we just established the fact that we can make anything up. Undisclosed sources. Okay, this has been verified, but not one, not two, but three people on the CNN staff one day ago. All right. The Israeli government has not confirmed the specific claim that Hamas attackers cut off the heads of babies during their shock attack on Saturday, an Israeli official told CNN, contradicting a previous public statement by the Prime Minister's office. Okay, so are you going to believe the Prime Minister in Israel, or are you going to believe CNN's undisclosed source? There has been cases of Hamas militants carrying out beheadings and other ISIS-style atrocities. However, we cannot confirm that the victims were men or women, soldiers or civilians, adults or children, the official said. Okay, so I guess that makes it all right. You know, these, these uh, Matthew, Richard, and Joshua all agree, it just makes it all okay. Prime Minister... Benjamin Netanyahu indicated that people have been beheaded by Hamas in an appearance beside Secretary of State Anthony Blinken on Thursday, but did not specify if they were children. His office later released what is described as horrifying photos of babies murdered and burned by Hamas monsters. Okay, so they weren't beheaded. Oh, what a relief. Man, I am really glad they didn't cut off the heads of those babies. They only burnt them alive. But what is this telling us? Hey, when we start looking at the Bible later on in this video, we're going to find out child sacrifices were burnt offerings that are God's. Is that what was happening? Is this is what we should be paying attention to? You see, when we start seeing conflicting stories from the side that committed the atrocities, that's kind of a signal from God and the Holy Spirit saying, pay attention to this stuff. And what are we seeing here? Oh, well, they weren't beheaded. They were burnt alive. They were... we got to ask the question, were those child sacrifices? And are these Hamas people serving a different God? One that we can identify in the Old Testament. So it says, The three photos showed two babies whose bodies had been burned beyond recognition and a third infant's blood-stained body. The post said that Netanyahu showed Blinken the photos as well as others. So, 
CNN is verifying that babies were killed. But they weren't beheaded. Oh, man. See how they, 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 they try to justify these things by spinning stories? And here's another story. President Biden on Wednesday confirmed for the first time that Hamas beheaded children during the brutal terror attacks on Israel this past weekend, saying he saw photos of the atrocities. Mr. Biden confirmed the beheading during a roundtable discussion with Jewish community leaders at the White House to underscore U.S. support for Israel amid its war with Hamas. It matters that Americans see what's happening. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I never really thought that I would see confirmed pictures of terrorists beheading children, Mr. Biden said. So, there you go. You know, is it verified or, or is it not? And, and even after it was confirmed by the Prime Minister in Israel, his staff, Anthony Blinken, the envoy in Israel, and even President Joe Biden, who, you know, I guess most of us watching this video would never agree with him, except in this particular case, CNN and uh, Yahoo in Canada still insist it didn't happen. That they were only burnt alive. So, I don't know. You got to kind of figure out what are their sources. Well, so basically, what is this all saying, all doing? We're going to take a look at, at, at child sacrifices in the Bible, but one of the things that really shocked me when I was studying that in the Bible is those ancient kings, those ancient nations somehow used child sacrifices as a way to bring together their armies, to form their armies, to get the worst demon-possessed people on their side and behind them. I don't know. And and what are we seeing today? What groups are we seeing align with Hamas and the other terrorists in that region? And even on the streets in the United States. So Basically, we uh, uh, heard a, a call for a worldwide jihad. And of course, Friday, October 13th. Never mind that, you know, Friday is supposed to be the Muslim day of rest. I mean, yeah, okay. Why should that make a difference? Okay. But nothing really happened. At least I haven't heard anything yet. Uh, so what's really going to happen when the rest of the world learns the majority of Muslim countries could live without Hamas, Iran, and really don't care about Palestine. I mean, realistically, we can't do what the left wants us to do, is basically say all Muslims are alike. They're all members of Hamas. They all follow Iran. We know that Muslims have been fighting wars against other Muslim factions for generations, for centuries. So why would we think they're all exactly the same right now? That's what the left wants us to believe. And we have to be smarter than that. Now, keep in mind, especially since... There's a vote right now for Speaker of the House. McCarthy got removed. People do not want to see Jim Jordan because Jim Jordan is a a 100% patriot who really puts his neck out to defend the American public. And there are rhinos, and thanks to Nancy Pelosi during her two-year reign of terror, in the uh, House of Representatives, the Democrats got $22 trillion at their disposal 
and that's enough to buy just about anything. And we are only four votes in the House from this administration supporting Hamas and Iran. Are they? Are we going to see that? I don't know what the future holds. Um, not a profit. So, we're going to get into the Bible study, but don't forget to uh, like and share and subscribe. And without any further ado, let's switch right over to Esor for a little bit of information. <laughs> 